Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting edition of Magnetism Today with your host. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, hey, it's good to have everybody back in the class again. Uh, we're kind of continuing the series on magnetism and electricity a little bit. We have a couple of bonus videos just in case like uh, your teacher wants to talk about it. We're going to look at what's known as right-hand rule number one and right-hand rule number two today. So what the this really boils down to is just this. Anytime you have a magnetic field, so if you have a magnet, let's say, if you had a magnet, so there's like the north end of a magnet, north end of a magnet would have field lines running out of the end, starting at one end of the magnet and trying to make their way literally back to the other end of the magnet. If you had a charged particle, maybe an electron, maybe a proton, in this case, let's say proton right now, so let's say you had a proton at this location. You had this proton, and it was moving through this field. What would happen is this magnetic field would actually exert a force on the proton. And so the purpose of the right-hand rule, which is all the stuff you see written out here, the purpose of the right-hand rule is to tell you the direction of that force. Now... I don't know, I've never done this via video before, so this might be hard to try and explain to do. So this is like your textbook, right-hand rule, is this little picture that I've got drawn here. So if you look at all these objects, and in physics, or in calculus, it'd be easier to describe this, because what we've actually got here is what's known as a cross product, is what this is. So what happens is the force is the cross product of the velocity vector and the vector b, which probably has you go, Mr. Cole, that makes no sense to me. Well, then I'm sure if I use words like orthogonal vector, you'd probably even get madder at me. So I'm going to try and leave that out for now since this is not a calculus video. The only difference is if we were like in Cal-based physics right now, I would write it like this. And if you are in Cal-based physics, then that will make sense to you at this point. And a matter of fact, what's funny is it actually probably makes the problems easier to do it like that. But anyway, what happens is you've got these two, in this case, I've got this velocity and this magnetic field. And if you look, they're at right angles to each other. So you got two vectors. You've got a magnetic field vector and... Sorry, I feel compelled to do the little vector signs. You've got a magnetic field vector and a velocity vector that are sitting in a right-hand angle to each other. And if you look, it exerts a force at 90 degrees to the other vectors, and that is the force that is exerted. It's this magnetic force that's being exerted. Now, I keep stressing something. The right-hand rule, as you see it, only works for positive, notice the positive sign, only works for positively charged particles. So you should say, Mr. Cole, what happens if an electron goes into a magnetic field? Simple. You just reverse the direction of the force. So it's easier for right now to talk about nothing but positive particles, and once you got that down, all you got to do is flip your answer if it gives you a negative charged particle. So let's try and really understand this for a positive particle for, force. For it. Sorry, geez, I can't talk. So take a look at this video. This is the way a lot of people teach right-hand rule. It's the way I like to teach it. So you lay your fingers out, and your fingers represent the magnetic field. So like this is the field from the magnet. So if you remember like the field coming out of the North Pole. And then your thumb, notice this right angle, your thumb represents the velocity of the particle. So you've got some particle, some positively charged particle right now. And let's say it's moving in that direction. And what's happening is you're in a magnetic field that's running in the same direction. So this is your magnetic field that's in the same direction as your fingers. So look, align your thumb with the particle's motion, align your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, and the force literally comes out of your palm. Now, something you would hate about this example is like on a textbook or a paper or something, it'll say the force is out of the 
page. And that's the way we would say this. The force is coming out of the page. So wherever your palm faces, that's the direction of the force. So we look over here, and this is like something from a textbook. <coughs> and the way I kind of don't like it as well, because it's hard to see the right angle. By the way, it doesn't have to doesn't have to be a dead right angle. You can actually have an angle in it. But what happened is the force is at its max when this is a right angle. Uh, if you look nitpickingly at the formula uh, in algebra-based physics, you'll see this sine of theta. And so the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. So that's why your force will always be at a max if the angle is at 90 degrees. But it will reduce the force as your thumb, let's say your thumb creeps in this direction and you decrease the angle. So take a look at the formula. And again, this is an algebra-based physics formula. And so you should be able to see that if you decrease the angle, then it's a direct relationship. You would decrease the force on the particle as well. But again, your fingers represent the magnetic field. Your thumb represents the velocity of the particle. And your palm, whichever directions it points, represents the force. And again, if it slipped you a negative particle in there, like, aha, I got you, trick, just flip the direction of the force, which should have you going, what's the opposite in this case of out of the page? You just say into the page. So let's go down here and look, and let's draw a couple of examples. And all I'm going to do in this video is make a couple examples. So you're going to see this a lot. You're going to see these little X's for fields, and you're going to see these little dots. And so you need to have a reference what they're talking about this. This is how you draw vectors that are coming in and out of the page. That's what this represents. So it all goes back to the idea of if any of you are into archery. And so if you have an arrow, and here is my arrow, as terrible as I'm kind of drawing an arrow, but arrows have fletching on the back of the arrow. And so what these pictures represent is this. If you see a dot, that represents the tip of the arrow. So the dots represent, in this case, a field that's literally coming out of the page. And so over here, if you see the, uh, the X, that X represents the fletching. It represents the back of the arrow. So this represents a magnetic field going into the page. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to do something. I'm going to put a positive particle. So there's a positive particle. And I'm going to draw a velocity vector. So I'm going to draw a velocity vector straight up. And if we were in real life right now, this would be very easy to teach you. But what I want you to do is take your hand and jam it into the screen of your device. In other words, take your hand like you see in this picture. Take your hand, your fingers out straight, and your thumb at 90 degrees. So essentially, uh, 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 and then that's a terrible looking hand, isn't it? But I want you to take your hand, your fingers pointed out, and I want you to jam your fingers into the screen, and I want your thumb to be directed directly up in the same direction as that velocity vector I've just drawn. And now the question is, which direction does your palm face? Well, if you're doing this right, your palm should be facing to the left. So the force on this object would be to the left. Let's do one more. Uh, let's say you had an object. Let's do this. Let's say you had an object moving to the left. So let's say you had a positive object, charged object, moving to the left in this field. Now take your fingers once again, jam your fingers straight into the device, and point your thumb to the left. So put your hand into the screen, aiming your fingers forward, and then turn your thumb so it looks the same way. Now, if you're following exactly what I'm saying, the palm of your hand should be pointed straight down. So the force is down. So now let's come over here. Let's transition to this one. So here, this one's going to be a bit more of a contortionist move for you. Uh, let's go back and let's get back like a red color again. It's maybe a little, be a little easier to see. So here's another. Again, all I'm going to talk about right now is positive particles. And what I want to do is this. How about this one? 
And you're going to have to kind of like make a little contortionist effect with your hand. But here's the question. So I need you to orient your fingers so that the tips of your hand, <laughs> the tip of your fingers is pointed directly at your face. And turn your thumb so that it points to the right. And now the question is, which direction does your palm point? And hopefully your palm is pointing towards the bottom of the page at this point. So that's the direction of your force. The questions you're going to be asked are literally as simple as these. So we'll do one more. I always, I'll be honest, if you were in my class, you would probably end up getting this next one. I like doing it just because it makes people look stupid kind of when they're doing this i hate to say it that way but i get entertainment out of watching you like try and flex your wrist during the test so try this one so your fingers need to be pointing right at you with your thumb directed towards the north on the page which direction is your palm face well again if you did it right your palm should be facing to the right so again, what happens if the problem tried to trick you and threw a negatively charged particle at you? Easy. You just use the, the, it's the opposite charge, so the force goes the opposite direction. Let's take a couple more quick little clips here of this. So here's a few examples, and we'll do a separate video on right-hand rule number two. So look at A, and what you should do is try and address. As a matter of fact, take a moment pause this video and answer these six questions and see how your what your answer is all right so i'm going to assume you've already paused it and now you're back so the x represents a field going into the paper so point your fingers directly into this screen and now aim your thumb so it's going up which direction does your palm face well your magnetic field should be directed to the left all right now what about this guy this time the magnetic field is directed to the right the velocity objects going up so you should literally this one's great you should literally lay your hand down your right hand down i've actually seen somebody using their left hand for this and then got confused because it didn't work no no you should literally lay your hand down like this maybe except your finger shouldn't be quite that pointy You've got a magnetic field in that direction. You've got a velocity in this direction. Again, I should be looking at your knuckles across the back of your hand right now. Which direction does your palm face? Into the page. So that's how you'd answer the question. The force is into the page. Move over to C. So this time, your finger should be pointing down your thumb should be pointing to the left your palm should literally be coming directly pointed you should be staring at your palm in this one so this one is out of the page and this one over here remember the dots represent arrow at you so what you're going to do is basically hold your hand up like you're telling someone hey at this point your finger should be pointed at your face with your thumb aimed to the left which means your palm should be facing up so your force should be going up or somebody might say north i don't know how they might ask it on the test now this one all you're going to do is remember for maximum force you put your velocity at the right hand angle the right hand rule still applies in this one it's just that we've got a theta, so the strength of the force will be reduced. But in terms of doing the problem, it's still simple. Lay your fingers down. So basically, once again, lay your fingers down so that your fingers are aimed to the right. And this time, your thumb should have a little slight forward angle to it. <laughs> this hand is so terrible. I should be looking at your knuckles again. And which direction is your palm face? Into the page. All right, now this last one may be a little bit harder. I need you to lay your hand down so that your fingers are pointing to the right 
And your thumb needs to be pointing this way. Now, this might be a good trick question. So, assuming you have a normal hand, your thumb generally probably works like this. So, I would probably advise to you not to try and twist your thumb all the way around backwards, like by breaking it off. Unless, of course, you owe money to the mob. They might help you out with this. So I hope you can kind of figure out that in order to do this problem, your palm's going to have to be facing you, unless you're a contortionist, and your thumb's going to have to kind of be angled back a little. Jeez, <laughs> that is... Hey, look, I can give it an eye. Now it's like this insane robot chicken thing. So anyway, uh, no spoof off robot chicken. But I did like their Star Wars stuff back in the day. Anyway, if nothing else, you might want to go look at some robot chicken real quick. But in order to make the robot chicken, your palm will have to be facing you. So your force is out of the page. And hopefully at this point, you are ready to answer questions that look like these. All right, so we'll catch you later. Y'all stay good. Bye.